Hi, for my next project I'm going to uh, make another enclosed bowl out of this piece of utile or util, which I think is part of the mahogany family. Um, I'm going to create a pattern uh, around the top which will consist of two lines of aluminium uh, inserts and within those two lines I'm going to put some coloured acrylic pattern and probably some milliput as well. Um, so I'll end up with a coloured pattern running right round here um, enclosed by two aluminium lines. So um, we'll see how we get on. Okay, so uh, using my half inch uh, bull gouge fingernail grind, I've uh, managed to shape the outside of the bowl uh, using push cuts and some shear cuts. Um, there's quite a bit of tear out in places, um, but I, I do believe that sort of mahogany um, is, is sort of prone to tear out. Uh, but hopefully that'll sand down okay. Um, I've made some marks here for a 70mm dovetail uh, so I can put it on my uh, Nova chuck and uh, do the other side of the bowl so this is where the foot will be ok so using a uh, dovetail scraper I'm going to create the 70mm diameter dovetail Okay, sanding to 400. So the sanding worked very well. Uh, I applied um, two coats of sanding sealer, then some Yorkshire grit, and then uh, wood wax 22, and then Hampshire sheet. And it's come out really well, so I'm very pleased with that so far. Okay, so the bowl is now um, mounted on my 70mm uh, chuck jaws, and uh, I've made a mark here which is about a third of the way in to the width of the bowl and that'll be sort of where I'm going to make the curve from and we're going to curve around here just slightly and I've marked on this side where I'm going to start hollowing out the bowl about 800 revs
wanted to achieve. So now I'm going to use this uh, multi-tip hollowing tool. Okay, I think I've achieved the amount of undercuts I'm looking for here. Uh, I've got to bear in mind I'm going to use a parting tool to cut some grooves here to put the aluminium in. So I don't want to go too thin towards the top. But I've got a reasonable undercut, so uh, quite happy with that so far. So I'm just going to change the tip on this uh, following tool to a scraper to see if we can just um, make that a bit better. So this is the uh, scraper that I've attached to this uh, multi-tip hollowing tool and I believe um, it's got to be angled down slightly to achieve a cut. So uh, let's see how we get on. Okay then, so with this parting tool I'm going to create the two bands for um, the aluminium to go in. And I think I'm going to create a little band in here as well to put a little uh, aluminium uh, band in as well. So we'll see how we get on.
Okay, so I'm going to do a bit of sanding and uh, I'll get back to you afterwards. Okay, so the sanding went extremely well. Um, I've created uh, another groove here for the aluminium inlay and in each of these grooves I've used um, a thin parting tool to make the groove a bit deeper and to enable the aluminium to get a better grip because what I'll be doing once we've got the aluminium in here I'll be taking this wood out and we'll be putting some pattern in there so this needs to be quite strong where the aluminium is going to go so anyway the next stage is to fill this with aluminium Okay, so to make the aluminium powder, I'm using this uh, G-Flex epoxy resin. So I'll mix that and add some powder. And this is equal quantities, so I'm trying to weigh it out. We'll see how this works. No, these scales aren't registered at all, so I'll have to guess. to fill the grooves with this uh, epoxy resin and aluminium powder mix uh, it looks a bit of a mess at the moment um, and it's beginning to sag a little but I think I'll just leave it and have a go at cutting it back once it's dried in uh, a day or so's time so see you later Okay, so the uh, epoxy resin mix has um, set. I've noticed there's a, a few air bubbles here. Um, but we'll see what it looks like once I've trimmed off uh, the top bit. Result so far, and to be honest, it's a bit of a disaster. There's uh, quite a few air holes around the aluminium inlay. The aluminium inlay also seems to be a little bit on the soft side, I don't know why. So, um, what I'm going to do is have a go at cutting the uh, middle bit out of the wood to see what we're left with. And if it is a total disaster, I'll just get rid of all of this. We'll put a different one in.
cut in the recess has worked quite well. Um, so this is a 3mm deep recess ready for the perspex um, but I've not received the perspex yet um, in the post. So in the meantime um, I'll make some more of this aluminium epoxy resin just try and fill in some of these air holes. So we'll see how we get on with that. Okay, so my uh, acrylic sheets have arrived. These are three millimeter thick sheets uh, and they're opaque as opposed to transparent. Um, so what I'm gonna do is to cut some of these into little oblong shapes and stick them in the bowl. Okay, so I've just stuck these um, in the bowl using some epoxy resin. So what I'm going to do now is to fill the gaps in with some black milliput. Okay so I've mixed the milliput um, and made these um, small worm type shapes which will make it sort of fairly easy to fill the gaps. Um, for more information on milliput and how you mix it uh, check out Jim Overton's site his um, YouTube channel. Uh, he's got bags of information there about Milliput. Um, very informative. Um, so I'll put a link somewhere on my video to his uh, YouTube channel. So anyway, let's give it a try. rather a long time to complete this so um, I'll get back to you with the uh, final result. Well hopefully I've filled in all the gaps um, so we'll leave that to set overnight and then we'll turn the top off and see the final result. So fingers crossed. Okay, so 24 hours on and the uh, milliput is dried. So this is the interesting stage where we're going to um, remove this milliput and expose the pattern. Now I've got a couple of concerns here. First of all, as I understand it, acrylic can sort of chip quite easily. So I'm going to use this uh, negative rake scraper that I bought recently. I've not used this yet, so it'll be interesting to see how that works. The other concern I've got is um, the aluminium bands. I successfully managed to fill in the air holes in the in the bands, but I'm concerned now that if I start to um, remove any material from the aluminium, then I'm going to expose more air holes. But I suppose we'll see how we get on. Result so far, um, I've got quite a few of these air holes, so I'm going to have to fill those in again. Some around here as well. I think some of the milliput uh, 
needs to be filled in just just the odd little bits um, so I'll do that and I'll get back to you with the result so I've just finished it off with the uh, Hampshire Sheen Micro Crystalline Wax and that looks pretty good right, so this is the finished bowl um, in all honesty the aluminium inlay was a real pain to do kept on exposing air holes every time I touched it with any sandpaper. Um, however, I think I got a reasonable result in the end. Um, also next time I use a, acrylic, I think I'll try some transparent acrylic as opposed to opaque. Um, and lastly, uh, my experience of the negative rake scraper, to be honest, wasn't great. Um, whether or not I wasn't using the tool right, I don't know, but it didn't really seem to cut all that well. Um, anyway, all in all, I'm really, really happy with the result. I hope you like it.